Kelly 13 writes, I usually just journal right on my background paper. But what do you do when you've got a stack of big quotes or big journaling cards that may not fit your theme? I love simple stories collections. I'm just lost with all these quotes and journaling cards. Glitter Girl, can you help Aaron Kelly concoct clever quotations? Of course I can. Just wanted to start by showing you what you get in a simple stories collection kit. So you're getting one little bonus, which is this little pack of transparency overlays. So they're four by six and you get six of them. There are three designs, two of each. So those only come in the collection pack. And then we have all the papers. So there are six 12 by 12 pattern papers. And there's normally one or two that have a frame kind of design like this and everything else is a full page pattern. So you can use them as full pages or you can cut them into smaller pieces. So there are six of those and then we get into the cut apart sheets. So we have the flashcard designs which has then another pattern on the back and larger cards, these four by six cards which are double sided so there's four by six cards on both sides you can use either side that you like or if you're using pocketed page protectors then you can let both sides show because you'd have that in your album um, so there's two sets of those that are the landscape 4x6 and there's one that's portrait 4x6 then you get different sizes um, all mixed together so you get two big journaling blocks with three squares and the same sizes on the other side. So if I want to use this one, I haven't cut this up so that I can't use the one um, opposite on the other side. Yeah, so I could use the polka dots and I could still use the wood grain here. And also some borders and different widths. So you've got several that are small plus a longer one for journaling or a title. 6 by 12s that you can use on a 12 by 12 page or you can put in a 6 by 12 page protector all on their own and also some landscape you could use this whole you can cut it into pieces of course and then two sticker sheets one with lots of lettering and word and um, little word blocks and phrases and one with more embellishment styled stickers so you've got borders you've got some little tape pieces and um, all different shapes and some lettering in there too Okay, so one thing I think is really useful if you're going to use a collection kit like this is to automatically look at the things that you know you would and wouldn't use. So for example, I've picked up this um, Harvest Lane collection because I like the autumn feel of it all, but we don't say fall in this country to mean um, autumn where, where I live. So things like I heart fall wouldn't make sense on my pages but I can look at that and look just slightly around it so I could just not end up using I could use the I and the heart and maybe even the letter F for something else and use the word all or here I can just I can use these so in a title or embellishment where I want to say all the something <laughs> I could use that and, and have that so it's still useful even though I'm not going to use it in that context or I need to use the word fall in a different meaning and um, so things like that um, everything else there is is pretty useful for that one the other thing I run into in autumn collections is the word color so anything that says like changing colors um, or autumn colors, things like that. We spell colors with a U here. So um, for me, those are going to be the pieces that I don't use. So when I'm looking at a collection, I'm looking how many of those pieces are going to be in there, how much is going to be stuff that I really don't really want to use because the wording or the spelling or anything like that is not particularly right for me. But likewise, it doesn't have to be a, a country or language type issue. It could just be what you do and don't scrapbook. So um, like in a, in a thankful or autumn um, collection, you've got kind of a mix of uh, Thanksgiving type things and gratitude and blessings but then you also have harvest and autumn and apples so you could even use it for back to school and all of us have a different balance of what kind of pages we do so some things may be really useful to you and some not some people will scrap the word family a lot some people it's not going to apply to their albums so there's no right or wrong there it's just being aware of what you really 
would use and what you wouldn't and that can help you decide if you want to buy the full collection if you want to just pick and choose the individual pieces that you like the most okay so different things like that like here fall favorites I don't say fall and I don't spell favorites that way so I know that this is not going to be right in my album but it doesn't mean that I couldn't use this whole piece because I could just place another element on top of that to give it a different feel so if I like this pattern and this shape of a journaling box I'm still in with the winner it's not a waste to me okay so I'm going to use some bits and pieces from this collection the Harvest Lane collection from Simple Stories and I'm going to include some of those pieces that I wouldn't normally use and adapt them um, to fit by covering them up or changing them around and things like that so that you can see that even the cards that are not the ones that's, that um, strike your fancy straight away might still be useful. I'm going to put it with some other collections. So I have two um, photos that I'm going to use and some other autumn collections that have just hit the store. This one is from Studio Calico Yearbook and it has a grid on the back but I'm loving the green there and all the different colors. And then these pattern papers from the new Amy Tangerine which is called Ready Set Go from American Crafts which has some lovely rich tones. It has several different printed craft cardstocks. So it's white on an, on a craft background and there are several different ones. I'll put it down in the shopping list so you can have a look. Um, but today I'm going to use this one with all the leaves on it. And then also this brown floral which has a yellow parquet flooring on the other side. And this orange, love this kind of sketch design, which has a cream and white pattern on the back. And then this one doesn't, the full pattern is a bit too bold for the colors I want to use if you see it against all those others. But I really like the globe motif and they are travel photos that I'm going to use today. So I'm thinking that I'll just cut a small um, row of the globes and then with some brown ink on the edge I think I can tone it in to make it match um, and work well together. If you do, um, if you do scrap travel photos this is a great paper that you might want to stock up on and one of my favorite things is that all of the globes are not in the same place so it is um, it is showing all different parts of the globe and it's as if it's just been spun randomly so it's quite nice because if you if you travel worldwide you may find that a lot of the map papers always show the same part of the map and it can be a little difficult to kind of change it up so this one is good it has all different globes all on one um, pattern paper okay so I'm gonna get started with that and I would love for you to grab things like this where you might have cards that just are your leftovers and you haven't figured out how you're going to use Use them and we'll see if we can put them to work today. Here's my basic start and it's pretty simple. I've done this start plenty of times before so it's just two four by six put right together with one um, narrow photo mat and then a horizontal strip so that I have something to ground everything that I'm going to build on top. So starting there and then I'm going to start with this square piece from the Simple Stories collection that I know that I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use it as it is. Um, the leaves could work fine, but I'm not going to use the words. These pictures weren't even taken in the fall. And I want to build on top of that so that I'm not wasting this piece. The other side doesn't really fit the, um, the theme of how I work. It's very cute, but I don't particularly use the kind of quilted um, country style. So I think my best bet is to use this side, but to add things on top to change it around a little bit. So my first step is to look at the placement and this is going to be too big um, to go over the top, but in this case I can just trim some of it and tuck it underneath because it's not going to it's not going to be a problem if I cover up or if I cut off part of that lettering because it's not going to show anyway. So I think what I'll do is pop it underneath the photo instead of underneath the photo mat so that I have different levels or different layers here. And then I can build up from that horizontal line. And I can start to look for ways to cover up the top. Now I could just use a strip of paper and then put my title on top of there really nice and easy. But I wanted to perhaps do something a little bit more creative. So I'm going to try some circle punches and the pattern papers that I pulled out. Punching two little circles but different sizes. So I've used two circle punches but you could also use nested dies or anything else like that that will let you 
have multiple sizes in the same shape. And I've covered up part of the lettering. Now I need to have something that's going to come over here to the side. The sticker sheet has these little tape pieces. So we're going to start with those. And I'm adding just brown ink to the edges of pretty much everything on this page. So that I can see is going to cover up most things. I feel like I need another little piece underneath there. So let's see what elements are here. Um, none of the picture-y type stickers are particularly a good match. So look back at the pattern paper. And I actually think just cutting the ledger from this, I'm looking for something really neutral. And I might even be able to use the, the little bird and, and leaf design later because I could always cut that out to become an embellishment. So I can layer that underneath there. And I've actually even cut that bigger than it needs to be, but it's okay. And then I can come in with a smaller circle and add that with some foam squares so that I start to build up some dimension. And if I look at the pattern of that circle, then I can place this so it looks like all of those beams are coming out from behind there for a little bit of a starburst effect. And now I have a place to build on top of this. I can add in title lettering. I can just dress this up so that it's more embellishment. And I have some options to go from there. But this was a card that in its and original state never would have made it onto one of my layouts and now it's going to blend in just fine. So I'm going to grab some embellishments to make that work. I know I also wanted to add a little bit of texture with some lace tape and this just comes um, in a roll and it has adhesive on the back so I can layer that right in there and have that little bit of texture and bringing back that cream because I know I have used the white there on that globe paper. And I'll grab some lettering and figure out where my writing's going to go and then I can get everything balanced and work from there. To build my title I went to another of the um, 4x6 cards in that collection and I just want to use this piece but I don't want to use the word fall. So first thing I'm going to do is cut out the banner piece from that wood background, which I can use elsewhere. And then I'm going to add this in to include all of the words except fall. I want to be able to add the lettering in between these two pieces so that actually instead of just not using the word fall, I can add something else to it. So I'm going to cut this apart and I gotten a few steps further down the line before I realized this, so um, I'll add this back in now. So that now, instead of it being fall as in the season, I can add in some lettering. And these are the new, um, these are some new thickers from Ready, Set, Go. And they're called Weekender. They're tiles, so they're a bit like an update on the Scrabble tile idea because they don't look exactly like a Scrabble tile, but the idea is there. So instead of it saying fall, I can use it as waterfall to go with the photos. And at the moment, I'm just placing them on the page. I'm not actually sticking them down yet because I want to be able to move them around and get the spacing right. And then what I should have done before I stuck that top piece is to have a little bit of a, a measure. So I can place this one here, move this up a bit so that I can see that those letters will be able to fit in there. Then I'll take the center letter and go right to the middle 
and then I'll build out from there. So that one's in the middle. And just build it out from here. Now, these letters, of course, you could space them out, um, but I didn't want you to be able to see in between there to see where I've cut that pattern paper underneath. So in this case, I'm going to use them stuck together as all one big block. And now I can look for where I'm going to add my writing and balance off this embellishment. And I feel it needs a little bit more something on top and just to give it a little bit of shine or, or some sort of difference. So I'll look for the right element and get my writing down on the page. One thing that will help me a bit with the embellishment is some stamp designs. So this is the new stamp set that goes with the Ready, Set, er, yeah, Ready, Set, Go collection. And I'm going to use this little camera. So I'll just pop that onto my block. And with the, um, the scrap from that circle, I'm going to use the back side, the B side, that has this kind of aqua blue grid. And I'm just going to stamp a few of these in this little extra space so that then I can come back and cut them out. And that way I can add in another little embellishment without having anything pre-made. I'm just using paper and stamps and things like that today. Um, not anything that's ready-made in a packet and, and not really even much in the way of stickers today. So cut these out and then my areas of embellishment, I, I've added my journaling here so I want something up here to bring that in which then leads me to this corner. So I'm going to look for the bits and pieces I have left that I can repeat from this area to duplicate that here and here. The very first thing to go back to is the piece that I cut off of that box because it was too big because I might as well go ahead and use that and it will bring that pattern back in. So this is the most logical place, but I don't have a third piece to come up here, but I think I'll just roll with that for the moment and I'll add this here and then I'll find something else in the collection that will work at the top of the page. So that's a good size ratio there. Bring in a little bit more of the lace trim. Just make that match up but not overlap the photos there. And then I can repeat that same idea with the circle and the globe. I think I would like to bring in another layer of that sticker tape. So it's going to be different colors each time because they aren't duplicated. So I use the green one here. And I'll do that same trick. One side will be flat and the other will be popped so that it can go underneath there but on top there. Then I can come in with one of these cameras and tuck that into this embellishment too. Not completely certain where that's going to go and I may be thinking that perhaps that aqua was not as good a color as I was thinking. I'll set it aside for now and come back. I still like the camera motif but I'm just not sure on the brown and aqua color combination that I went with there. Maybe I need to change it up. So now I need to find something to do that same sort of motif at the top. And maybe in the border sheet there's something similar. That's normally a good place to look if you have the full collection. So you can see if that stripe is on the border sheet. But it's not, so I'll see if I have it in one of the pattern papers. Normally designs like that will repeat somewhere in the collection. It's just a matter of finding it. Sure enough, it was there in the 12 by 12. So just cut a strip to go along the top here and ink the edges to match everything else and then I can build the embellishment on top of that in a similar style. So again I want the lace tape, the little tape sticker, and the overlapped pattern paper circles. And 
this way I can bring that border so that the lace is pointing down to the journaling and bringing everything together. So I don't have any gaps. There's going to be no trapped space and that way your eye will naturally flow to the right spots. Bring in the yellow tape this time. So here's the gap that I need to fill this time with my circles. This time the circle is going to go right off the edge of the page. So just adhere it and make sure there's some adhesive right there on the edge so that it's not going to come free. And then I can take off the extra from the other side. And that gives me this good lining up of everything here. Um, that way I don't have that gap where you can see the end of the lace or a gap near the top of the writing, anything like that. And then I'll add the globe circle on top and do the same thing. Come to the other side and trim off the extra. And I can just come back with my ink and tidy up that edge so it's not so bright. And now I'm going to have a look at that camera stamp again and figure out exactly what I'd like to do with that. And that'll be it pretty much. Went back to the drawing board with those camera stamps and tried a little different combination of stamping that same camera stamp, camera stamp with an orange ink on some just ledger paper. And that's again cut from the cards that I wouldn't be using. So the one that has fall and, and all sorts of things like that or um, I had some ledger on the that same one that I used before with the bird and and the branch. So I um, played around with different inks and thought that this was the combination I liked best was that little flash of orange to pick up on the flash of orange in the photo mat there and just tucked one little camera into each of those three spots. Then for the final finishing touch I wanted something with a bit more texture and first thought maybe gems or pearls but then thought um, for a more natural look I'd go with wood grain. So I've pulled out the wood veneer arrows. They come in a pack that has both arrows and hearts and I'm just going to tuck one in to each embellishment section and I want them to point toward the middle of the page so your eye is going in. They're not particularly pointing to an exact spot in any of the embellishment and um, there's certainly that option but in this case there wasn't something really perfect to point to in the embellishment so I'm, I'm just going to have them all point in toward the middle of the page. Now your challenge this week is to use an element that you have in your stash with wording or quotation, anything sort of like that, a motif that you have in your collection but it's not what you would normally use. Things like wording that you wouldn't normally use where you have a piece um, that just has a different sort of element in your leftover, you're a bit stuck with it. Try and find a way to look around the wording or look around the motif and put it to use by layering things on top, cutting pieces apart, and see if you can actually still use that piece that was giving you a little bit more trouble. I'd love to see your um, your answer to that challenge in the gallery and you can find all of these new autumn collections in the shop. If you're watching on YouTube click the little link underneath the screen and it'll take you to see all of them there. Thanks so much for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.